we are very fortunate that we live in a society where freedom of expression is part of what we are accustomed to, but that doesn't mean that it isn't occasionally under threat. For example, a few years ago, the government um, tried to introduce a law that would make, um, which would restrict freedom of expression by making um, criticism of religion, religious incitement, a crime. It conflated criticism of a religion with criticism of a person. Now, we live in a world where certain people hold religious faiths where they believe that to criticize their religion is to attack them. But in fact, we also live in a world where um, our liberties are safeguarded by the fact that one is able to, to talk in public about things that other people may find very difficult to hear. It seems to me it's part of what the Enlightenment has given to us, is that it is important. It, living in a democracy can be difficult. It can mean that you hear people say all kinds of things um, that you don't want to, to hear, that offend you. Um, but to constrain that is to make is to stop the free expression of ideas which seems central to what a democratic society should allow. I'm a writer who, who doesn't like to be constrained by what I write about um, and I am conscious of the fact that one of the jobs of a writer is to say uncomfortable things, um, you know, not to be constrained by what ought to be said. But I think there, are, there have been cases in this um, country where writers have been constrained by what they said. The obvious examples are what happened to Salman Rushdie over the satanic verses, or what happened to the play um, um, Beshti, which um, some sections of the Sikh community objected to, or the protests that were heaped on the BBC's head when they did Jerry Stringer, the, the opera, which offended some sections of the Christian community. So I think it is something that we come across in this society. Well, I think I'm particularly um, conscious of the need for freedom of expression precisely because I grew up in South Africa and where freedom of expression was something that was totally curtailed, where you could do um, be prosecuted for having just one banned article in a particular house. I mean, my mother's wrote about, my mother was um, put in 90-day detention in, in 1963, and one of the things that she worried about the whole time that she was in solitary detention was the fact that they had found a banned article in her house. Now, this banned article actually had been written by her for an unbanned newspaper at the time, which was later banned. And so I have really been brought up with, with a, a real consciousness of what the constraints with of freedom of expression can do, not only to individuals, but also to a whole society. And I think if you look around the world, you often find that the constraint of freedom of expression goes along with a lack of democracy and a tyrannical government that is trying to control people in all sorts of other ways.